thank you guys. I just wanted to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Um, I arranged this event with the Chaining guys. It's brilliant to see so many people come up to the north of England. Uh, I know it's a difficult travel for some of you, and some of you have flown in. It's a real honour, honestly. Really, thank you very much. Um, just so we're all on the same page, because I know some people don't know what Chainlink is. Chainlink is a leading blockchain middleware company for smart contracts to connect to external data. Chainlink is building a decentralized Oracle technology, uh, which is used to create externally linked smart contracts by leading enterprises such as Swift and Google. And they're helping lead top smart contract teams such as the Web3 Foundation, OpenLaw, LinkPool, and CLCG. These guys up here. Um, so just to make sure we're all on the same page, if I say DLT, or distributed ledger technology, or a blockchain, they're the same things. They're synonymous with each other. Secondly, if I say decentralized oracles, or refer to middleware, an oracle is a decentralized bit of middleware on the decentralized oracle network. So a bit of a bit of memory lane here, just so everybody can be on the same page. Does anybody remember having to fill one of these in? Yeah? OK. So when, you were, when I was a young man, uh, my family we were all fishermen. So I had to go on to site as a young man and fill in the logbook at the end of the day. Logbook had where we were, how many fish we caught, what was the equipment looking like at the end of the day. These ledgers had to be manually compared to other ledgers, manual data entry. By the time I went to my first work experience in the noughties, my first challenge was data entry. This was a lot of fun. So this made businesses communicate in different ways, change from letters to emails. These emails, these phone calls, sometimes letters, and electronic data systems handle the majority of business-to-business -business interactions today. The latest ledger technology is called DLT, or a blockchain. This technology allows, us, allows companies to utilize a single database for collective truth. As DLTs and blockchains are immutable, this means they are unchangeable. Today we will discuss how to get data into a blockchain using a Chainlink smart contract to create externally aware automation. A Chainlink smart contract is a superior form of digital agreement as it connects external data, it is secure, it is reliable, and it has guaranteed outcomes. This technology allows automated data reconciliation, generation and timely payments for orders and invoices, increased visibility within supply chains, and in allows enhanced compliance. So the traditional problem that we've had with smart contracts is they've been unable to connect to external data. They're unable to know if a meaningful event has happened in the real world, unable to know whether contractual performance has occurred. So it's important because without contracts knowing what's going on in the real world, Without being able to affect real world events, they are limited to tokenization and the whole space won't go any further. Smart contracts need data driven proof that something happened in the external world, such as goods were delivered, that a market price has changed, or IoT data about an event. A solution to this connectivity problem is Chainlink, blockchain middleware, to connect APIs up to blockchains. An oracle sits between the smart contract network where the digital agreement functions and the external systems that the agreement needs to know about. What we at Chainlink want to do is provide data and payments as inputs and outputs for smart contracts. Once smart contracts can access inputs and outputs, they can become the dominant form of digital agreement. The third piece of what blockchain middleware does, this blockchain middleware does, the Chainlink middleware, is it allows cross-chain communication with other useful systems and blockchains. This means that anything can be built in. Your imagination is the only thing that holds you back with this technology. The thing you don't want to do is have a highly secure decentralized computation system running on thousands of nodes and providing you very good guarantees if it's only to be triggered by one node or a centralized oracle. 
All anybody has to do to game your contract is take out one node. If your ability for the contract to function on getting data comes from one node, it doesn't matter how good that whole system is. If you don't get your input, it's not going to work. This is the weak, list, weak link in the system currently. So the chain link solution is decentralization, offering a level of redundancy that says that multiple independent node operators all executed the same operation, creates a reliable solution. If a bunch of different people all agreed on the same thing, that's a good thing. We know that consensus has been reached. The approach is having multiple independent node operators verify the accuracy of an input. Reaching consensus about that accuracy and either on-chain or off-chain displaying the results, aggregating the results, sorry. I think the useful thing would be to walk through a little bit of an example. So what about payment on delivery? Say we use two chain linked APIs to ensure that the veracity of a delivery had occurred. Let's say you have a main system that is responsible for telling that the package has got there, but you wanted the second one for redundancy, for a backup. Because our contract is deterministic, it is highly reliable, it is immutable and really irreversible. So we need to make sure that our inputs, our trigger is perfect. Now, once you've triggered it using a highly reliable source of inputs, you need to calculate the price. So you need to use as many data points or as many data feeds as you feel comfortable with. How much redundancy you require on the contract is up to you. The data feeds get fed into the contract using independent node operators. And that level is decentralized. And that level of decentralization provides a reliable input. This is very, very important. Because if you wanted someone to have the game the contract, they would have to game one input or lot, lots of inputs or lots of independent node operators. And this becomes progressively more difficult, the more redundancy, the more independent node operators you actually utilize. So let's say you've calculated the price by going to independent exchanges and you know that the consensus has been reached with the price so you can pay out in Bitcoin. You know that you have a reliable proof of delivery from multiple sources. You know that it happened. And you know you want to make payment in the format that you prefer. This is the decentralization of inputs and outputs. The inputs being delivered reliably and the outputs in the multitude of payment options that you would find useful. When bridging the gap between smart contracts and external systems, please consider what is the benefit of a smart contract? What is the usefulness that people would like to ascribe to a smart contract over other forms of digital agreement? In our opinion, that usefulness is based on reliability and determinism of the digital agreement. The way traditional agreements are written today, they are not deterministic. People can stop them any time they want. If you have a smart contract system that is highly reliable, highly secure, and deterministic, but it's triggered by highly insecure systems, you arrive at a situation where the end-to-end -end reliability is low. And with this solution, we need end high end-to-end -end reliability. You want the average security and reliability of the contract in terms of inputs, the contract, and the outputs to be extremely high if you want people to give the types of guarantees we want to be associated with smart contracts. So we've seen that ledgers are being updated to allow automated data reconciliation using APIs. We understand that chain link smart contracts can push and pull data while ensuring payments can take place in a timely fashion. We know that to feed data into a blockchain, we must guarantee that this data is as accurate as possible due to the blockchain's immutable characteristics, as well as the reliable and secure inputs and outputs that take place in the smart contract. So at the moment, Chainlink team is focused on supporting the growth in the DeFi space, decentralized finance space. DeFi has become one of the fastest growing fields of smart contracts running on public blockchains. It's currently around a billion dollars locked up in DeFi protocols, pardon me, running on the Ethereum blockchain. Chainlink is becoming the standard for DApps to reach their full world data, reach real world data. DeFi products are using decentralized infrastructure, so that's blockchains and smart contracts, to allow users all over the world to lend, borrow, make bets, and generate interests without a central authority. Some of these apps require 
pricing data. If you go to feeds.chain.link, there's uh, 26 odd reference contracts up there, should you need your reference data. So chaining oracles, as we've all met, already mentioned, retrieve the data at the API endpoint and returns its aggregated answer to the Oracle contract. This is it working in, this is Chainlink working, doing what it said it was gonna do. When we expand out our thinking about the power of Oracles, beyond price data, Chainlink enables you to have an ad hoc committee of hand-picked trusted nodes doing secure multi-party computations, able to use trusted execution environments, and can communicate information bi-directionally but what do we want to do? What if we want to do all this privately? In this simple example that we've got behind me, Alice and Bob made a bet on a stock movement. The price goes up, Alice wins. The price goes down, Bob wins. However, Alice and Bob, they've stipulated within the smart contract that if a one is broadcast to the blockchain, if Alice wins, and a zero is broadcast to the blockchain in the case of Bob winning. Based on the value of this, a pseudonym account is created for the winner. This tiny modification of the smart contract uses the oracles to remove all visibility from, from others the basis of this bet. We now have privacy. By separating state changes from payment outcomes and using oracles to pass data confidentially between them, DeFi instruments on public blockchains become a far more attractive to highly regulated companies with large capital allocations. Enabling privacy and scalability of Solidity computational code allows developers to build a vast array of solutions. With many further scalability solutions in the pipeline, Chainlink is using oracles to solve two major problems, inhibiting the development of the enterprise smart contract, namely connectivity and privacy with audibility. So our friend Crypto Sponge has prepared some lovely bits of data for us. And what I'm trying to show you here is the trend. So as you can see from the majority of these graphs, the uptake of the Chainlink network, the amount of people using it is growing considerably day by day. So we know that over 60 companies are creating chain links using a myriad of different data sources. However, we know there's hundreds of teams working on this at the moment. Blockchains and smart contracts cannot go any further without than tokenization without external data. We know this, these companies know this, the hundreds of teams know this. To integrate external data, you need a blockchain middleware or an Oracle. Oracles allow businesses to interact with each other and we think this is gonna spur on the fourth industrial revolution. So in conclusion, when Windows was shipped, in 1995 with TCIP already inclu included, Microsoft knew the value of a newly connected world. If you break down the internet to its basic function, what Microsoft had the vision to include was the building blocks of a document transfer system. That was a key pillar of the third industrial revolution, document transfer, it's what we all use now. The fourth industrial revolution was more than likely focused on data. The data must be available for transfer, and businesses must adopt solutions that are secure and reliable. All the largest companies in the world have blockchain POCs going on, proofs of concept, the department or a collaboration ongoing. They realize that on the back of this technology, newly invented business and service models will allow individuals, public authorities, and businesses to interact without compromising data privacy and commercial confidentiality. Services that are most ripe for improvement are any scenario which involves multiple parties wasting time and resources reconciling data when they should all be viewing the same database, or processes where efficiency gains and other benefits can all be achieved if all the participants have visibility off the, across the whole supply or value chain. So fundamentally, just as Microsoft included the key building blocks in Windows 95, the Chainlink team have created the opportunity for developers to create fully end-to-end -end secure Chainlinks in a day. These key building blocks create a reliable environment. It's triggered in a reliable way. 
It runs in a reliable system. And then I can probably tell you it's going to execute in a reliable way too. Uh, thank you very much for your time. That's a chain link talk. If anybody has any questions, I'm more than happy to, uh, especially for you guys who just turned up. Thank you very much. Thank you.